Hello. Hello. Good evening and welcome. This is Tea with a Druid number. Um, I'm just I'm just adjusting something. I need to do one more thing to get everything centered and moved along like that. That's just great. Okay. Now, um, how are you? Uh, how lovely to see you. And uh, this is Tea with a Druid 106. And Daniel has arrived from Germany and Ellie is piled into the clearing in the forest too. Lovely to see you. And uh, Lawrence from the Netherlands again. And uh, I am Nelly Kelly from Skegness. And Joe Swanson from Minnesota. Hi, lovely to see you. So um, I hope you had a really good festive season and that you are well rested, that you haven't eaten too much and you're ready for another tea with the druid. And some of you may remember that a few weeks ago, uh, a friend who was over from, uh, from the States was staying with us and she gave a wonderful Tea with the Druid session. Uh, and she's back. She's been up in Scotland, surviving gale force winds and rain and has retreated to the nicer climes of Southern England. And she's here uh, to talk to us about thresholds and transitions as we move into this new year and indeed new decade. So sit back, have a cup of tea. We've both got our huge enormous mugs here and uh, I'll see you at the end of the uh, of this broadcast. Roma, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Philip, and well, hello everybody. It's nice to see you again, although I think it's better to say it's nice to be seen again. <laughs> anyway, here we are, a tea with the Druid. And it's New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve for sure, uh, in some parts of the world already and coming up on New Year's Eve here. And I thought I would talk about New Year's Eve because it is, it is an artificial threshold. There's nothing really that defines one moment is the old year and one moment is the new year, except maybe the clock. So we have all these traditions around New Year's, out with the old, in with the new, we celebrate with, with noise and drinking and partying, and we think that we're going to cast out all of the things that we don't want, and we're going to all of a sudden have a happy new year that's going to answer all of our needs and aspirations. I know that we all probably have some kind of ritualizing of New Year's, in my family, what we did for so many years was we took little slips of paper and on one little slip of paper, we wrote all of the things we wanted to get rid of or didn't want to have or didn't want to do anymore. And we wrote all these bad things on one piece of paper. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then on the other piece of paper, we wrote all the things that we wished and hoped for in the new year. And then we got out the things from last year's New Year's Eve, and we, we looked at them together to see if we'd made progress from last year. So then we built a fire, and we burned the bad things. We got rid of them, and we burned the old wishes and hopes from the prior year, and we watched them go up in smoke and disappear. And then we could celebrate the new year. Then the party started. And I find that um, in some instances, that ceremony is really wonderful. And if it works for you, I think that's great. Didn't always work for me. I thought I would tell you a little story about a different way of crossing a threshold that I, that I came to. Not too long ago in this last year, I came to a point in time where I had just returned home from a journey and I was full of fire. I was full of creativity. I was full of this new project that I was going to take on and do. And uh, I, I, got, I got started on it and everything that could possibly go wrong went wrong. Things went wrong in my office. Things went wrong in the kitchen. Things went wrong in the community. Things just were awful. And I couldn't get started. I got really stuck and I was ready to toss the whole project all the way, just toss the project away. 
So I thought about, um, did I really just want to toss it? And I, and I thought, no, I don't want to really toss it, but I wish I could just go out and come in again. I had just come in from a long journey full of all of this, and I thought, maybe I need a do-over. So I got in my car. I lived in Colorado at the time, which is in the center of the United States, right near the Rocky Mountains. I got in my car, and I drove to the next state which was 300 miles away. I drove all day, uh, and I, as I drove, I just let all these thoughts and disappointments kind of leave my head. I drove 300 miles over the borderline to Kansas, parked my car, stopped the car, got out of the car, took a few deep breaths, and... and felt that I had crossed over some border, which was very important to me, that I recrossed the border. And then I got back in my car and turned the car around and drove 300 miles home. And that was my do-over. That was my way of actualizing, crossing a real threshold, a real boundary in real time that I could mark to give myself permission to go into the next phase. And, and I learned something from that. I learned that for me, when I cross certain thresholds, I need that crossing. I need that feeling of actually crossing over a line or over a boundary and coming back at it from another perspective. Now, since then, I've learned that you don't have to drive 300 miles to get there, that if, if you can find or if I could find a nearby bridge of any length over any chasm, and if I could start on one side of the bridge with my messed up project or my messed up intentions or my minor failures or whatever, and walk across the bridge and then turn around and walk back across the bridge, back into my life, I had a do-over. And I was thinking about that in terms of the new year, that sometimes the, the relinquishing of the old and partying into the new doesn't really um, solve it for me. I need to cross the threshold deliberately and physically in order to make it work. I don't know if that works for any of you, but that's something that I'm that I use instead of the old method. So I thought what I might do tonight is to take you on a on a virtual journey like that, where we can cross the threshold of the new year in a different way. And so I'm going to invite you to join me in a long walk into the new year by doing a, a crossing. So you don't have to get in your car and drive 300 miles. So right where you are, we can start by just centering our breath and just calming ourselves down. It's been a crazy season. We've had all these parties, all this food, all this stuff going on, family, presents, you know it. So inhale, let it go. Do that a couple more times. Inhale and just let it go. and find yourself just getting calmer and more ready. And then if you feel like it, you can close your eyes and we'll go on a little journey together. So stay with your breath, inhale and exhale consciously as we walk. We'll leave your room, 
your home or your screen. We're going to go outside and we'll see a path. And the path turns to the left and along the path runs this beautiful river. So the path is going right along the river. So just find yourself walking along the path. Keep your breathing steady, inhaling and exhaling. Pay attention to what you're hearing. Maybe you're hearing the cry of a gull. Maybe you're hearing a crow. Maybe you're hearing a little bird in the top of the trees or just the trees rustling. Maybe you're hearing kind of the flow and sus of the river. Okay. Pay attention to what you're smelling. Smelling the smell of moving water. Those of you who live in deserts know that that is a definite smell. Smelling the woods. Getting in touch with your footsteps. Breathing. And as you walk along, this path is going toward a wood. And walk along with it until you enter the woods. And keep walking and breathing. But a new sound will come in. Along with the sounds we just talked about, you hear the sound of burbling water, kind of rushing water, bubbling and burbling and, and little mini uh, waterfalls and flowing, very uh, fast flowing water. And you realize that through the bushes over to your left, on the other side of the path is a canal or a a uh, stream, a feeder stream to the river, and it's very, very active. And so you're now walking between these two water sources. You have the flowing of the river on the one hand, on your right hand, and you have this burbling, almost invisible stream rushing along on the left. And you keep walking and keep breathing. I find that sometimes if I use a couple of words when I'm walking, it helps to, to tone my breathing. So maybe you say, um, accept and trust. Accept, inhale, trust, exhale. And use that as you walk along, listening to the rivers Letting your mind sort of empty out. Letting your emotions sort of empty out. And after a while, you come to a bridge. And at first the bridge goes over where the little feeder creek or the brushing water goes under that bridge into the river. But as you go further along, you're actually on a very long span that crosses the entire river. And so start walking across that span and start thinking about crossing this river. Keep your breathing steady, accept, trust, or whatever words you're using. When you get to the middle of the bridge, Look around. I find that sometimes I turn in a complete circle looking at the water all around me from this vantage point of being right in the middle over the top of it, looking down. So take a minute and look at the water. Look at the water flowing beneath you on the bridge. And then when you're ready, Keep walking. Walk all the way across the bridge, breathing. Keep your breathing steady. Stay in with your mantra until you've walked all the way across to the other side. And then turn around and face the river again. Face the end of the bridge there. Just let yourself feel that you've made a crossing, 
that you've accomplished this crossing and now you're ready to go back. So start back over the bridge. I sometimes change my mantra. So I sometimes change it to commit on the inhale and trust on the exhale. Commit and trust. Walking back to the center of the bridge. Again, when you get to the center of the bridge, stop and acknowledge where you are. You're looking over all this flowing water and you're out in the brightness of the air away from the woods. Maybe you see birds. You let the river flow under the bridge and when you're ready, Walk on. Come in. Trust. Walk all the way back over the bridge, back over where it crosses the little burbling brook, and back onto the path toward home. And pay attention. And you discover that now, the river, which has been on your right all this time, is on your left. And the burbling stream that was on your left all the way is now on your right. So your perspective has shifted. Even though you're in the same spot that you were not long ago, your perspective and how you see it and feel it has shifted. And then walk along the path as you did before, paying attention to your breathing, paying attention to your footsteps. Taking with you any kind of new thoughts you might have had, any new enthusiasms you might have, or any clarity that you might have gained. And walking back up the path. When you come to the end of the woods and you see your spot ahead of you, start normalizing your breath, just regular old breathing. Pick up the pace if you want to. Walking back to where you started, back into your house, back into your spot, back into your screen. And then when you're ready, open your eyes. Happy New Year. Well, thank you, Rama. That was yeah. lovely. That was lovely. Right. Thank you. Ah. So here we are, wonderfully prepared for the new year by that meditation by these thoughts of transition and uh, let's just look at all the comments here there are lots and lots and lots of them now i want to build a wee bridge in my yard says Absolutely. julia yeah here, here. yes i need to travel at times to see see things in perspective again even crossing the river helps a bit says fernie real that's what always interests me, you know, Roma, Roma does a lot of writing and what I find Roma is, and I'm sure everybody does really, is how extraordinary it is that you can you sometimes need to physically move somewhere else in order to write the piece that yes. you had to write. And looked at logically, it doesn't make sense because it's a huge hassle moving yourself from one place to another. And uh, it'd be much easier if you could just open the book and write wherever you were. But somehow you need to move uh, move to somewhere else. Um, Roma Johnson, I see people asking who Roma is. Roma's going to be doing uh, a workshop for us at the big Glastonbury gathering next year in 2020 in June. And um, so you'll be able to uh, see her then. She's, she's, she's published some, I, 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 last time she gave a talk, I put one of her pictures up. She's a fantastic artist. So I'll put, and I, if she gives me permission, I'll put another of her pictures up on the on the blog. Um, 
So thank you all. Have a wonderful new year. And um, and of course, you know, what you can do, some people are suggesting it here, I can see, is they're going to go for a walk yeah. to actually enact that. That's exactly what we're going to do with a bunch of friends on New Year's Day. And in fact, I just scouted out the walk and went over a couple of bridges myself uh, today, actually. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to do. So it's like a pilgrimage, you know, pilgrimage in consciousness and a pilgrimage with the body too. So have a wonderful, wonderful week. And uh, I'll see you all again. Let's have a look. When is next week? January the 6th, 2020. Next Monday. Yeah. So, okay. Lots of love to everybody. Bye. And Bye. Ha have, a, have a great week.